For the first two Halo games, the only flyable vehicle was this, the Banshee. But as we all know, that changed with Halo 3. So in game, the Banshee acts very much like a slow fixed wing aircraft. The AV-14 Hornet however, acts much more like a rotary wing aircraft or a helicopter. In the game's lore, the Hornet takes on a role that is similar to a helicopter gunship such as the Apache or the Cobra. In this role, these vehicles provide close air support for units on the ground, but I would argue that their primary function is more of an anti-armor role but I'm not sure if I fully agree with this. I think the Hornet kind of serves as a hybrid between something larger, such as a helicopter gunship, or something smaller, such as a scout helicopter or a little bird. This helicopter is smaller, it's more nimble, it's still armed, and it can carry troops on its skids, just like the Hornet can. Out of all the playable UNSC air vehicles, the Hornet does take my pick as my favorite although the Falcon does come in at a very close second place. In game, the vehicle is easy and yet fun to fly, it's well armed, although probably too well armed, and the ability to sling extra troops on the skids is such a cool feature. I mean sure, the ride is a bit sketchy, but you just can't beat loading it up with guys with Spartan lasers and destroying everything. From a universe point of view, it's pretty much on par with all Bungie-era UNSC vehicles. It strikes that perfect balance that Bungie always seemed to get with human vehicles, where it's futuristic and yet it was very grounded and realistic at the same time. It feels like, whilst we can't make it today, it wouldn't be that much of a stretch to make it at some point in the future. And you can't deny that this thing simply looks awesome. Anyway, let's look at the mock now. Yeah, it is silver. I'm not sure why, but whenever I've seen the Hornet in-game, I always seem to just think that it's silver. It's only when I actually start checking the in-game model that I realise that it's actually the exact same dull olive green as every other UNSC vehicle. I decided to go ahead and build it in silver, partly because to me that's just how it's always looked, and partly because the transport Hornet is also in this light grey silver colour anyway. I also feel like it would probably look a little bit weird in the dark sage green that Mega offers, and the other greens are out of the question, so silver it was. Covering the features of the mod, the engine nacelles both rotate forwards and backwards, and the turbines within them rotate left and right, just like in game. Behind these main wings, we have these ailerons that pivot up and down. On the other side of the main wing, we also have these cannons which individually pivot up and down and a single figure can be seated within the main cockpit. Moving to the front of the aircraft, the front sensor suite can also be pivoted up and down. The figures can stand or sit on the landing skids. Finally, the front landing skid is somewhat poseable. As normal, this is actually my second attempt at making a Hornet, and I have to say that I think the second version is markedly improved on the first. So I'm not going to focus too much on this version as it was a first attempt, but I did learn a fair few things that really helped me out on the second iteration of the model. So firstly, the fuselage on this model is just wrong. The Hornet has always been a very, very thin vehicle, and I think that's a big reason why Mega's struggled to make a really good version of it over the years. The minifigs in general are a lot wider than they are taller, which means that you usually need more width in a cockpit space than you do need height. Now this isn't such a problem when you're talking about something like the Scorpion, which is a really large, bulky vehicle that you've got plenty of space to fit a figure into, but when it comes to something like the Hornet, it can really push out that central fuselage and this generally just makes it a stockier vehicle than it should be. So with this model I got a bit preoccupied with trying to conform a very very slight slope to the fuselage 
This did end up just pushing out that central fuselage too much and just making it far wider and just ruining the aesthetic of the Hornet in general. The nose of the model also isn't quite right, so for this I tried to incorporate a specific nose piece. The idea behind this was to try and make it a bit modular, so you could have the normal sensor suite in a typical Hornet, or you could swap that out for a chin gun that you can see in the Hornets of Halo Wars. But ultimately this really just ended up keeping the design a bit too open, and resulted in neither implementation being particularly very good. The engine nacelles on this model are also a lot more primitive than the newer version. So whilst this version did have full function, just like the new one does, at the time I just didn't really have the right pieces to be able to build that very circular, open shape. And generally that's just the story of this first model. There are a bunch of other design limitations just based around pieces, and I think that the second version is just very much improved simply due to the fact that I had more pieces to choose from. So the main fuselage and cockpit section is based around a very similar design principle. The main piece here that I had to design around is this Sabre track cockpit section. So a lot like the Sabre canopy, the Hornet canopy does actually fit, but this is far from perfect as the Hornet canopy does pop out of it quite a lot. This isn't ideal, but it's just something that I do have to live with as I literally have no other pieces to take their place. I'm pretty happy with the shaping that I managed to get around the headrest part of the cockpit, but I think everywhere else there is a lot of room for improvement. Based on the current design, I more or less just ran out of space to put any other details in there. It's good enough, but it definitely could be better. The front sensor area is vastly improved over the previous version. As I said before, they now swivel and the whole thing just seems to fit a lot better within the overall design. It is a little bit flimsy though, as it is only attached from a single point. The midsection of the model is fine. It is shaped fairly well, but there's definitely some improvement that could be made here. The skids of the Hornet are vastly improved over the previous version. Again, with this version, I just had a lot more pieces to work with. To me, they're now more or less perfectly shaped, so there's not a lot of improvement to be done on the shaping. The main area that these could really be improved is how they attach to the main body. It's not terrible, but they are prone to being a bit fragile, especially as the weight of the Hornet pushes back on the rear two skids. As usual, the underside is fairly well detailed as well. So moving up to this top section, this is probably one of the areas that I feel like has had the most improvement from the previous version. Having some more pieces has really allowed me to round off a lot of the upper section of the Hornet, and that added to a large improvement on the looks of this model. I think that the areas where it rounds off towards the engines could be started a little bit farther apart than they are currently, but that's not a huge issue. I don't think there's really much more to be done on the cannons, they look really really good. The only downside is the attachment isn't super strong, but there's not really a lot I can do about that. I think that the engines are probably the most improved area of this model. Rounding them off properly just really finishes the model off. And whilst they don't technically rotate around the ideal point that they do in game, I'm not really that bothered by it if I'm honest. What is really unfortunate about this design though is that they are very crumbly. It does not take a lot of effort for them to fall apart and they are very fiddly to put together. I do have a few ideas of how to make them stick just that bit better. If you're careful with it, it also isn't too much of an issue. And last but not least, I'm pretty happy with how the rears turned out. Now this is a bit weird because it's probably the most boring part of the model, but to me there's not really a lot that I can improve with on the tail. To get the shaping right, I used this asymmetric design, but in a symmetric way, and unless you look really closely, you can't really tell. The only major improvement that I could give to this part is probably the tail fin. The only way I could really do that is if I happened to get the right pieces, and even if I did, it would be a very quick pop and swap. So let's have a look and see how this compares to Mega's other designs. So for whatever reason, First Hornet is the only set from the original series that I didn't get. I don't think it was a particularly bad try at the Hornet, but I think it could have been more representative of what the model actually was. From what I hear, it just fell apart all the time, so I never really regretted not getting it that much. So then there's Mega's second wave of Hornet designs. Under these I'd include the Hornet Attack the NMPD Hornet and the Hornet vs Vampire sets. 
and I've got to say that these designs were a marked improvement upon the first design. That canopy piece especially just made these sets really really cool. In general I'd say the main problem with them is the fact that they ended up being very very thick and bulky compared to what the model should be. Now this is understandable of course for playability but I think you just kind of lost the essence of part of what a Hornet is in that and I think that's why they never really stood out to me that much. So after this you got the Hornet Blitz and if I'm honest, I don't really know what they were thinking with this one. It is by far the worst of all the Hornet models. I would just say that it's barely a Hornet in the first place. I think they were trying to bit the Hornet into a lower price category set, but the design of it in general almost reminds me of what someone would make if they were trying to knock off Halo. Finally, we have the 2023 Hornet Recon. Although I don't have it yet, I've got to say that I think that this is the best Hornet that Mega has ever made. It's got a thin profile, it's well rounded off, the canopy looks great, and the skids really fit in well with the model. But there are a few areas that I would like to see them improve if I'm honest. Firstly, the size of the model is a bit small. Although I really like the new canopy, unfortunately it's swinging open rather than sliding is a bit of a downgrade. And finally, it's in that green. I know I said it last time, but I'm just going to say it again. The shiny green just kind of takes away from the military feel of a lot of the sets. So I feel like the model would look a lot better if they re-released it in like a darker green or even a grey or a silver. Anyway, compared to previous sets, they absolutely smashed this Hornet out of the park. I'm pretty happy with how the mox turned out, but I definitely want to update it soon. This was my first mock of what I call my third generation of mock, and these were made after getting a hold of a much larger parts library and getting a hold of Mega's new snot adapters. Up until recently, I haven't owned that many of Mega's newer sets, so getting a hold of a lot of these newer parts has really opened up my designs. Since I've built this mock, I've learned a lot more about using these snot adapters and trying to optimize and get the most out of the design. So now that I've learned all this, I really want to come back to the Hornet and see what I can do now. What about you? What do you think? I definitely think it's on the fragile side, so there's definitely room for improvement. Finally, thanks so much to everyone who subbed after only one video. I wasn't really expecting that many people to pick up on it, so all the likes, comments, feedback, everything has been really, really cool to hear. I'm hoping to turn around videos a bit faster in the future, and if you like this, I've got a fair amount more to showcase. So if you haven't subbed, please do, if you're interested. I'm Reforger, and I hope to see you in the next video.